Okay, so let's put some numbers in here for a parallel RC circuit and see what the math looks like when we actually start to, to crunch the numbers. We'll use um, the example that's in the handout that's on Blackboard. So let me see, what numbers do we have? Well, let's start with this. Because it's parallel, what's well, constant? The voltage is constant. So we've got our voltages, our three voltage vectors, which means that the triangle in the middle is going to represent current. Okay. Um, now let's look at the numbers. The, the voltage is 120 volts. So it's nice that we were given that piece of information because we can put it in all three triangles. We're also told, and these are the same numbers in every example, um, every time that we do this, let's see, we have the resistance is 10 ohms. And we were given the capacitance and we were given the frequency so that we can calculate for XC, the capacitive reactance. I've already done that. It's 53.05 ohms. Notice what I've done here is I've just listed R, X, C, and Z. All right, rather than putting them in the triangle. Because in fact, in the triangle, this would be the inverse of R is equal to the inverse of 10 ohms. Okay, so that's the information we have to put in the triangle. But I'm not even going to do that. We're just going to list our three values here. We know R, 10 ohms. We know XC, 53.05 ohms. Can we find, find Z? Not yet. We could, if we did the triangle, we could calculate the hypotenuse would be the inverse of Z. From there, we could find Z. But there's a much easier way to do this, which is just get away from the impedance triangle and let's work in the current triangle. Okay, so how can we get over here? Well, we can get over here nice and quickly because we know the voltage and we know the resistance, okay, the size of the resistor. And so we can determine the current flowing through that resistor. So current IR equals E over R, okay, 120 volts divided by 10 ohms, 12 amps, the amount of current flowing through the resistor or the resistive portion of the circuit, the resistive branch. Okay, now where do we go next? We need to draw a current vector, okay, which is either leading or lagging the voltage vector, by 90 degrees so that we can proceed in building our right angle triangle. So it's a capacitive circuit, which means what's the relationship between current and voltage. So this is Eli the Iceman. Okay. Oops, sorry. Eli the Iceman submitted so in a capacitive circuit. The current is leading the voltage. So if this is our voltage here at zero degrees, and the current vector through the resistor, also at zero degrees, no phase shift because of the resistor or through the resistor, but now through the capacitor, current leads the voltage. So there's the current vector at 90 degrees leading the voltage vector, which is at zero degrees. Okay, so this is IC. Same way we found IR, okay, we know the voltage and we know the capacitive reactance, okay, we can calculate the current through the capacitor. So it's 120 volts divided by the 53 ohms gives us 2.26 amps. There's the current through the capacitor, okay? And so now here we can draw our hypotenuse for our current triangle and we can determine the total current. I T and here now we can use Pythagoras to determine the total current in our circuit. So I can see that with 12 amps here in the adjacent and 2.26 amps here on the opposite, this is going to be a fairly small number, which means this is going to be something just a little bit bigger than 12. Okay. So we calculate the hypotenuse using Pythagoras and we get 12.21 amps. Okay, and now we can calculate our angle. Okay, so it could be uh, the adjacent, sorry, the adjacent over the opposite. Sorry, the opposite over the adjacent. Got to get this right. So, katoa, opposite over adjacent. 
and then that would be the tan function to calculate our angle. Okay, or we could use sine with the opposite and the hypotenuse, or we could use cos with the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Lots of options. We know it's going to be a fairly small value, and it turns out it's 10 point 10.64 degrees. That's a 6. 10.64 degrees. Okay. We can also come back using this 12.21 amps as the hypotenuse. We can work backwards and find Z. Okay. So Z is equal to the voltage divided by the total current in the circuit. Okay. Which is 9.83. Nine point eight three ohms. Okay, and then we can also move forward, and we can find all of our powers. So we know at zero degrees, oops, not a current vector, just power. At zero degrees, what kind of power is that? That's the true power. At ninety degrees, that is reactive power. And the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is the apparent power. Okay, so each one of these powers can be found can be found by multiplying our voltage by the appropriate current. Okay, so if we take 120 volts multiplied by 2.26 amps, which is the current through the capacitor, that will give us our reactive power. Okay, so Reactive power of 271, 271.2 VARS, volt amps reactive. 120 volts multiplied by 12 amps will give us our true power, which is 1440 watts. And our apparent power will be a little bit bigger than that. It's 12.21 amps multiplied by the 120 volts gives us 1465.2 volt amps. Okay, and finally, the one last piece of information we need is the power factor. And the power factor, we can come back to this conversation. We looked at the relationship between the adjacent and the hypotenuse, knew this would be a little bit bigger, but not a lot. There's gonna be a pretty high power factor. We also see that because it's a really small angle, okay? So when we just 12 divided by 12.21, okay, which is the cos of the angle, okay, the number that we get is 0.98, and that rounds to 3. 0.983 what? What kind of circuit is this? Well, it is a capacitive circuit. Our, um, our capacitive current is leading our voltage, okay, and so it is a leading power factor. There we go, and there's how we crunch the numbers.